Hello guys, it's Shit Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So as for today's video we have a review of the Mars Gaming ML360, so all-in-one water cooling system by Mars Gaming with 360mm radiator, okay? With a 360mm radiator, three fans, a RGB which is basically um, kind of an enhanced RGB so we can actually get more effects than the usual RGB fans okay and that all for only 90 euros something that you can't actually find um, across the board in all markets for a 360 millimeters radiator most of them will cost you for example 120 130 euros and the prices of 80 to 90 euros will be actually on the 250 millimeters side okay not 360 millimeters like this one but before going further, just let me thank Biomag for sending this product. So Biomag and Mars Gaming uh, and Francisco for sending these products. Uh, they have sent lots of products, like for example the Mars Gaming ML360. They also sent me. They also sent me a gaming desk that I will also review. They also sent me that chair that you can see a bit here, which is the Air Cool Admiral, which is an awesome chair for its price. So yeah, I'll review them later, but for today we have the ML360. But well, let's just go on and start with the unboxing. So as for the unboxing, we have the usual case. So Mars Gaming ML360, as you can see, a RGB liquid cooler. And we have the, um, the, the white version, of course, but you have both the black and the white version, okay? So on the top, you only see this, the ML360 once again. On the side it's the same and on the other side you have some things like up to 550 watts TDP, pump speed up to 2550 RPM, more or less 10%, the noise which is uh, 11, 11, 18 dB, um, fan speed, fan noise level, airflow, pump dimensions, everything, you have everything here, okay? So let's open it and see what we have in actually inside, okay? Okay, it is. Let's open it. Okay, we have the foam here. Okay, very nice. We have the fan separated, obviously. So we have three RGB fans, a RGB fans. Yep, very nice. We have here the cables. The extension cables and basically the cables that you may or may not need okay very nice we have the connections here in this case it's for Threadripper and in here we have the connections for Intel and I think that the connections for AMD are, are also in here yep after I confirmed it is here inside AMD and yeah basically that's it now all we have is this massive AIO water cooler so with a pump here and the 360 radiator which is quite insane in size damn three fans for this it has to cool well it cools well the 12600k so it has to cool well this Okay, basically I needed to unmount almost everything, so I had to take the PSU out due to the cables in order to actually remove the fans, as you see, because um, because the, um, the radiator will be there, here, on the, um, um, on the, the inside end, sorry, on the, on the inside, while the fans will be on the outside, okay? So that's why I had to take the fans. It's, yeah was a lot of work <laughs> after some more work the fans are finally uh, mounted in the front only this uh, this screw that is left because I can't and I can't simply screw it due to this metal part so it, it is kind of a defect for people wanting to to install AIOs but yeah it's looking good so far yeah all you have to do now is go to the manual and see how your socket mount is installed. 
For example, you have the AMD socket mount, which will serve for AM3, AM2+, and AM4. The Threadripper sockets are different, so you have to install them in a different way. But most AMD sockets will be in the same way, um, and it is very, very easy to install. So, I mean, it's very easy, you just have to use the, the normal lock that you have on the AMD sockets. And as for the Intel 1700 and other sockets, you have to actually change the backplate of the motherboard, insert the one presented uh, on the Intel kit, and then just screw, just screw the screws you have on that backplate, okay? It's not, it's not that hard, but it definitely takes more time to install than the AMD counterpart, which is way, way easier way easier. After all said and done, the cooler looks amazing. And I know that um, the tubes should be on the bottom side, I do know, but this case does not have enough space in the bottom for the tubes, so I actually had to put them on top. So having tubes on the, um, the bottom side is the correct thing and will actually grant you lower temperatures and the bubbles won't stay at the top, okay? Uh, the bubbles, it won't create bubbles because the tubes are supposed to be on the top, on the bottom. But like I said before, I didn't have space, so I actually had to put them on top. And still, the cooler looks gorgeous and performs well, very well. But well, let's now watch the actual cooler performance while gaming because that's the most important thing: the actual cooler performance. So one of the best ways to actually show you how it performs. Uh, at least temperature wise um, I'm running this water cooler system with a uh, Ryzen 7 3800 XT as you can see here Ryzen 7 3800 XT from 30 to 50 percent uh, load at 50 watts output and it, it is running at 43 degrees with near silent operation from the CPU okay it is near silent I can assure you that the only the only um, the only thing that I hear right now is basically the um, the GPU and not the CPU at all. You can't even hear the fans. Now to actually push more frames to the CPU, to actually push the CPU a bit more, I've actually installed now the RX 6800 as you can see here, the RX 6800 which is way more powerful and will push way more FPS, making the CPU work more. So on CSGO we see once again like 45 degrees. Okay, it's there. The bomb is here. 45 degrees even on CSGO at 300 FPS. Of course, CSGO doesn't push the cores a lot and we have 16 threads. So yeah, let's move to the next game. So people, in order to actually test a heavier game, we are, I'm, we are actually, I'm we, and we are actually testing um, <laughs> the Warzone, Call of Duty Warzone, okay? Uh, as you can see, we are using the RX 6800 as well. And the CPU is using like 50%. Yes, 50% it seems. Okay, I'm already receiving damage, which is great. I suck at playing this game. So many people already. So yeah, basically 60 watts, 60 watts from 30 to 50 percent, and still only a bit above 50, um, 50 degrees. So yeah. Now, in terms of CPU temperatures, one thing that really impressed me was in Cinebench R23 that. Even pushing all the 16 threads to the max with AVX instructions on Cinebench R23, we actually only have 60 degrees with also near silent operation. And when I say near silent, I mean it's near silent operation at 4.4, 16 threads pushed as you can see and only up to 61, 62 degrees on the TCL die, which is, which is nothing for these CPUs. As you've seen, the cooler performs extremely well, but this is only, and I repeat, only just one CPU, which is the, uh, the Ryzen 7 3800 XT. But what about other CPUs? For that, I'll be testing the 12600K that I have with another Mars Gaming Cooler ML360. 
This so I can actually show you how it performs in another system with the 12600K that actually consumes a bit more power and it is actually known to be a bit more hot. Okay, it's, it's a, a bit, bit more, more hot. hot. It's known to be hotter. Hotter. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's proceed to the tests. So as you can see right now, we're actually running the 12600K, the i5 12600K with the RX 6800. So we're pushing close to 200 FPS. Uh, now it's getting, it's getting less, of course, 160. Yeah, but still over 70 F, 70 watts. I mean. And even at around 70 watts, 77 watts, as you can see, 79, 80 watts, so more or less 80 watts and 40% of 16 threads of usage, we're still overing 48, so even less than 50 degrees, which is literally nothing, okay? 50 degrees is nothing for a CPU like this, even slightly overclocked, and as you can see, 48, 52, and so on, we're not even over 55 degrees while playing, so... So yeah, basically that's it. It's it's what it is. So now we're playing Forza Horizon 5 once again with a uh, 6800. As you can see, for example, the 12600K is around 40% to th from 30 to 40% usage. Sorry, uh, 60, 70 watts, and around 40 to 50 degrees at max. So it's once again nothing. It's like 50 degrees, 50 degrees is literally nothing, okay? So, yeah, it's crazy how this cooler works perfectly fine with even the 4.8 gigahertz 12600K, so it, it rarely goes above 50 degrees at near silent operation. Now, on the Intel side with the 12600K, things are indeed a bit different. Although that the core temperatures won't probably pass the 17 degrees, which is completely fine, 70 degrees can run 24-7 for years and years without a single problem, but the problem mostly is the CPU package. And the CPU package, as you can see, is at 82 degrees. While the cores are at 70, the CPU package is at 82. And it's quite normal since we are actually pushing 180 watts draw on this CPU. And for a CPU pushing 180 watts, having 70 degrees on the cores and 82 degrees on the CPU package is not bad at all. Even more for a value cooler such as this one. Now, as for the pros and cons, we have on the pros the good build quality, the ARGB lighting, the fact that it is indeed a 360 mm radiator, and the fact that it costs only from 80 to 90 euros with a 360 millimeters ARGB and the good quality it presents. As for the cons, we have the fact that we have no RGB controller, could be included for a bit more money, maybe another version, but this isn't really a con, it's just more like a suggestion. Because on this price tag, you can't actually complain. And yeah, people, as you saw, the performance of this cooler is exceptional. Even under pressure, all 16 threads, both on the 3800 XT and on the 12600K running Cinebench R23, the temperatures are within the acceptable for a 16 threaded load. And if we're talking about the gaming scenarios, then it is even better. I didn't see none of these CPUs going over 55 degrees while playing. 55 degrees is literally nothing, a CPU can, can just be working 24-7, 4 years at 75 degrees, okay, 75 degrees, and we are working currently at below 55 degrees in almost any games, even, even for example on Warzone running at 160 to 200 FPS, it will just run perfectly at below 55 degrees, and that's really great. So this cooler has an amazing value in terms of price performance uh, and it looks gorgeous. So you can get a gorgeous AIO cooling system for only 90 euros. And for this price, 
it is definitely a must and I would pick it 100% sure. But once again, this cooling system DML360 is the way to go for a cheap 360mm radiator with a really, really good performance. Yeah, see you in the next video guys.